You're not coming with us. We're going as a family. You're just an outsider, and you have to stay here and look after him. He's disabled and useless. He'll only spoil the fun. You were a nurse, right? So you can't refuse to help him. That's why I brought you here in the first place. Do your job. I watched my mother-in-law and my husband leave the house with a big suitcase, ignoring my father-in-law's condition. They didn't care about what I had to endure every day in this house. I felt tears of anger and despair on my face. Shall we go too? I heard a voice behind me and turned around. I was stunned by what I saw. My father-in-law looked different. Ten days later, everything changed. My name is Beth and I'm 28 years old. I used to be a nurse at a nearby hospital, where I met my husband Alex. He was a frequent visitor at the hospital and he liked me. We got married six months ago. He's 35 years old, seven years older than me, and works as a civil servant. My work schedule was irregular, depending on the emergencies. This meant that I would have less time to spend with him. I stopped working for the time being and have been a full-time housewife. I never liked doing housework, but I gradually learned to be efficient for the sake of hardworking. Alex, one night he received a call from his mother. I could hear her frantic voice over the phone. Oh my god, your dad got into a car accident. I don't know what to do. Oh, dear. What should I do, mom? Calm down. Take a deep breath and tell me what happened. I was stunned to hear that my father-in-law corner had been in an accident. He had suffered a serious head injury, lost consciousness, and was rushed by ambulance. Fortunately, he survived. But the doctor said that his brain was damaged and that he would need adequate care for the rest of his life. This is terrible. Beth, will you move in with my parents? My mom wouldn't be able to do it over herself. It'll be a relief to have someone with experience. Of course, I'm concerned too. I do anything to help such a great father-in-law. Thus, I willingly accepted Alex's request to move in with my in-laws. The next day, I started a new life living with the four of us. However, it was the beginning of hell for me. At first, my mother-in-law Al welcomed me with smiles and open arms. Within three days, she gave up, um, housework and I found myself doing everything. Beth, you are a full-time housewife, right? Then. There's no reason for me to do the housework. Connor can't move or talk. So you look after him. Well, you were taking care of your patients before, so it's an easy task for you. Right? She always took the easy way out and forced me to do things she didn't want to do. Now, in those house was a big five-bedroom motion. It took me hours just to do the usual cleaning. On top of that, I had to do the laundry, cook meals, and take care of corner. I was exhausted every day. Even so I did everything without relying on Elle, but she never once thanked me. On the contrary, she enjoyed criticizing my efforts. Beth, you are not washing the clothes in the right way. Your cooking is tasteless without the proper seasoning. How can you call yourself a full-time housewife? I'm sorry, but I do everything by myself. Can you let me do it the way I want? No. You've only been housewife for six months and already think you owe that. This is my house. You live here, so you obey me. I became increasingly fed out with her treating me like a servant, and asked Alex for help. Huh? Can't you help me out? Once in a while, I'm getting tired of having to deal with your mother's complaints day in and day out. He responded with a smirk. Well, she has the authority in this house. So you just need to follow her rule. I'm already tired from working, so no way. I'm gonna help you with the chores for someone who has been provided by me, you ask him too much. I'd rather you be grateful. He was completely on our outside. While enduring such a situation, I tried my best to help Connor recover every day. 
Six months after we started living together, he got better to the point he could walk. How wonderful to see you walking. I praised his efforts in cares. Partly because I had been re-rewarded for all the care I had given him. However, he was still unable to speak properly and remained mute in response to me. He was not able to eat well and still suffered from the after-effects of the accident. Still. I held his hand tightly and kept telling him it's gonna be all right the next morning. As I was preparing breakfast, I heard Elle and Alex talking in the living room. It's our first trip to Paris. I can't believe I get to enjoy my first trip I abroad with you. I'm so excited. Me too. I'm honored to be able to take you there. Let's forget our stress and enjoy to the fullest. Apparently they have been planning the trip for several days without telling me and Carter when I overheard that they'll be leaving soon. I rushed to the living room. What on earth are you talking about? A trip to Paris. Oh, you heard us. We are going for a little getaway together. Do you have a problem? Um, I guess not. I thought it was nice that they're taking a trip together, but what bothered me was that they kept this a secret from me. It's neat to abrupt that you are leaving today. Why you didn't you tell me in advance? I've always wanted to visit Paris. I'm hurt that you didn't include me in your planning. What are you talking about? You are staying at home. Of course. Even if I told you I knew you would stop us anyway, so I decided to tell you on the day and I don't to bring my disabled husband with me. I don't want the hustle. For sure. You are a housewife who can't even do the job properly. Why don't you be useful, at least for change? I'm just glad to get away from corner, see my bewildered face. Elle smiled triumphantly and kept speaking ill of him. She never even tried to get involved with his care anyway, Mom, it's time to go. Oh, yes, we are leaving now. We'll be away for about 10 days, so make sure you take care of the house and take good care of Connor's dementia. I guess he's only going to get worse. I couldn't help but guess, but her insolent attitude toward her own husband, how could you say such a terrible thing? Shouldn't you wish for him to get better? As a wife, your husband is in such a condition. And you too are carelessly going away. What is wrong with you? Please cancel it. Now. I wanted to stop them from living with physical force if I could. What are you talking about? We've been looking forward to this trip and you are trying to ruin our mood. It's been planned for a long time and we've already booked the planned tickets. I even managed to get a paid leave and met the busy schedule, so I'm going to make the most of these 10 days I've been providing for you. You have no right to stop us. That's right. Corner isn't getting any better anyway. Nothing will change. Even if we stay with him, we are going to be late. So this conversation's over, once again, take care of the house. The pressure from the two of them was indeed too much for me and I was at the loss for words. They quickly run out without saying bye to Corner, but leaving me with orders. Not only L, but also Alex had abandoned me. I wanted to start wearing on the spot, but I could not show my tears in front of Corner. I brought breakfast to him with a smile as if nothing had happened. The moment I put the tray on the backside table, all those two gone already. To my surprise, he was able to talk. He even stood up from the bed without a problem. What the, what are you doing? You can speak. They've already left. Are you applauding amazement, then we are leaving too. He quickly got ready and walked out of the room. Ten days had passed since Elle and Alex left home. Suddenly they were speechless. The house which was supposed to be there had been turned into a flat land. Both of them panicked at the shocking sight. Our ex called me in frenzy. Oh my god, what the hell happened? The house is gone. Welcome. Come back. We got rid of the house. Also. Your father and I have decided to divorce you guys. Our attorney will call you later. 
They cursed me for this unexpected turn of event. There's no way you can do such a selfish thing. You are not even the owner of the house. She's right. You better explain yourself. I brushed it off saying I let Colin take over now. I handed the phone to him who was standing nearby. You too. Listen to me very carefully. They were stunned to hear him speak in such a clear voice. What really happened was that he had regained his speech about three months after the car accident. He had kept it a secret from us all and had been receiving treatment and rehabilitation at another hospital from by his acquaintance. With his amazing recovery, he was able to speak as normal and the after effects of the accident has disappeared. I had often witnessed him wandering about the house, but there was only a pretense of dementia. He was actually going to a hospital or to see his legal advisor. He was the only son of enough food and family and had been managing his first wealth alone since his parents died when he was young. On the day, L. Alex departed for Paris. I followed him to his attorney's office. He decided to move into a larger senior department with nursing care, which was affiliated with the hospital I used to work at. As I talking of appreciation, he offered me a sum of money for my immediate living expenses and a residence in one of his apartment buildings. After that he sold his house to a real estate company. We both packed up and moved into our new homes. Connor had seen more than enough of Aaron, Alex, nasty nature. Over the past few months. He was disgusted and demanded a divorce from Elle and declared to cut touch with both of them. How can you abandon your own sound? Alex was furious. But Connor calmly confessed. Actually, you and I are not related by blood. Alex was speechless. Connor explained to him everything that had happened. Alex was brought to the family when he was still newborn. Elle and Connor had kept it a secret all this time when Connor's best friend suddenly passed away, leaving his pregnant wife without much means to live. Con pitted and took her in. Their marriage was out of the norm, but they were happy living together as a family of three, however, Elle and Alex took advantage of the fact that Connor had become bedridden. They started spending a lot of his money and even used it to pay for the trip as well. When he noticed it, he pretended to be physically disabled. He dared them to do as they pleased and waited for the right moment. Having grown sick of them, he decided to sell the mansion. He also donated most of his wealth to the Foundation for Orphan Children. He had already asked the attorney to take care of the necessary procedures. I was amazed by the fact that something on such a big scale had been done so quietly. He told them that the rest will be discussed through his attorney and handed me the phone. Ellen, Alex flipped out and begged me to do something about it, but I had no sympathy for them. Too bad, I've been told I'm useless, except as a caregiver, I hung up the phone on them car and I received numerous calls from them every day. I picked up once and told them, I've left everything in the hands of my lawyer, so don't call me again. I blocked their calls. After that. Not only did they lose the place of residence, but they faced divorce proceedings. My mother-in-law and my husband were shocked and they learned that most of the estate was given to a charity and they would not inherit anything. They also had to face the consequences of their actions. Alex lost his job when his boss found out that he had lied about taking family leave to go on the trip. He had to work part-time while looking for a new job. My mother-in-law had to work as a cleaner from dawn to dusk. They moved into a small apartment and struggled to pay the bills. I, on the other hand, got divorced and went back to the hospital where I used to work. I became a nurse again and visited my father-in-law often. We had a good relationship and enjoyed talking to each other. Why didn't you tell me that you had recovered? You could have told me. Well, I was afraid that they would find out too if I told you. I wanted to surprise them. I'm sorry you had to put up with them for six months. I apologize sincerely. Don't worry about it. I was ready to leave them anyway. Thank you for giving me the chance. You always looked after me. I hope I repaid your kindness. Thank you too. 
He treated me like his own daughter and I loved him dearly. I was lucky to meet such a nice man despite everything that happened. I worked hard as a nurse and hoped to find a wonderful man in my life soon.